everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I have something really special planned for today. But before I start talking about that, let's open up this box. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's more tape. <laughs> Now, let's open this box. Da 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 da! Look at all of these colors. This is the Nifty 50 kit from AmeriColor. And we have 50 different colors of food coloring. I have not looked at a list of all these colors, and some of them might be familiar because I have, I think, all of these shades of gray uh, from their Nifty Shades of Gray kit already. But there's also a lot of pinks, reds, multiple blues and greens, multiple purples, well, at least two purples, but still many purples, um, oranges and reds, and I cannot wait to play with this set. One standout is the bright white, which I'm guessing, yeah, I think it just has titanium dioxide in it. It doesn't actually have any food coloring in it. Today, we are gonna play with all 50 of these colors. That's right, I said all 50. I am going to mix these 50 food coloring colors together to see what kind of final color we get and how it will break. But Rebecca, if you mix all of these colors together, won't you just get something fairly muddy? It's possible, but one of the things I'm curious about is the different intensities and proportions of color. So it's very possible that we'll get something that will look like a broken black or something that's fairly purple because there's a lot of red in here, but um, it's hard to say which colors are the most potent, which ones are the most saturated, and we won't know until we mix all 50 of these together. I have a little dropper bottle here, and I am going to create a mixture, sort of a stock mixture of all the colors in this bottle, and then use this mixture to dye some yarn. In theory, I could just add one drop of every color into a cup and use that, but there's a chance that 50 drops of food coloring could be a little more concentrated than I want. So therefore, I'm gonna take five drops of each color, put it into this bottle, and then from there, we will use a certain number of drops of that mixture to dye our yarn. Fortunately, each of these bottles comes with a little seal. So it won't be quite so fast to just put the drops of each one into the bottle. But I can use these little, I guess, lid covers as, <laughs> as a way to swatch it on a paper towel. So we can take a look at the array of colors in a couple different ways. Each of the food coloring bottles does have a list of ingredients on it. So while you might not know the proportions or color intensity, you can see if what different uh, food coloring molecules are included in that specific mixture. And I really appreciate that that information is on the bottles. But now, let's get started and enjoy the following time lapse of me adding five drops of 50 shades into this dropper. And yes, I am even going to add drops of the white, even though I know that titanium dioxide will do nothing. We are going to give this a full shot with all nifty 50 food coloring colors. And if you get that reference, let me know in the comments. I have now finished the first set of 10, and I think that this is not a perfect science because the measurements vary from color to color. 
some of these reds are so viscous that they're still like hanging out on the top of the bottle and even with tapping um, haven't really gone all the way down. I think that now as we move further down the box uh, the colors are going to be a little more liquid so it'll be a little easier to have consistent drops. There's just an awful lot of red in here and my prediction is that red is going to dominate the entire uh, look to this mixture. It is time for the white. Uh, the white is full of titanium dioxide. Some of these other colors have that in there as well, making sure to give it a good shake. Uh, this I know is not going to affect the final color at all. Um, what it will affect is the rinse. Um, so the titanium dioxide will just rinse straight out. Um, but one, two, three, four, five, and of all the colors, that white, can you see it on the inside a little bit? Of all the colors, that one dripped really, really easily. <laughs> Alright, the last color is Americolor Black, color number 50. I actually have never used Americolor Black before, so I'm not sure uh, how it breaks um, or anything like that. Uh, but clearly that's something I'll need to play with as well. Let's see how it goes. One, three, four. Five. And here is our concoction. We zoom into the bottle, you can see like some hints of blue in the other colors, but overall I think it is um, a little hard to say what it looks like for sure. I'm seeing a lot of red right now, but that's also because those are the colors that were stuck on the sides. So again, this didn't end up being, let's start mixing it, a perfectly even, um, evenly distributed mixture because some of the colors were just so much thicker that the drops were way larger. So I feel like even though I tried to add five drops of each one, some ended up with the equivalent of like 15 compared to others. But yeah, there's still, it's not totally mixed yet. I'm going to go off camera, ooh, look at that streak down the side. I'm gonna go off camera and just shake this up for a while. <laughs> Here are the inner lids of the 50 colors. These colors don't necessarily look as bright. There are a lot that look really dark and the main reason for that is that the food coloring is really concentrated. So like all these yellows look very orange, uh, but that when you mix them with white or when you dilute them, they will all be brighter. If this were wet, then we might have been able to see how some of the colors would break or something. But uh, I do see, and I think in some hints of things that could hint to breaking, and I definitely know um, that some of these colors will absolutely break based on the uh, based on the ingredients inside the food coloring container. Color breaking happens because different food coloring molecules will bind to yarn and fiber at different rates. The reds typically bind faster than the yellows, which bind a little faster than the blues. And depending on the proportions in your mixture, you can then get multiple colors coming out of one 
uh, component. And I have a whole other video where I chatted about this in length. And now back to mixing our mixture of the Nifty 50 Maricolor shades. It is the moment of truth. Here is our mixture. And it's hard to know if it's like a red, a brown, a black right now. But let's um, add it to just half a cup of plain tap water and see what happens. Okay, and that went straight to the bottom. That is viscous. <laughs> um, let's add uh, nine more drops. Okay, so we've got a total of 10 drops and let's stir it up and see about the color. All right, we're looking a little, a little muddy actually, but I think that's because there's some titanium dioxide in there. But it looks like we actually may end up with a brown. Um, I think that I need to add, ooh, whatever it is, it's definitely gonna break. It's a little too light to see for sure on there right now. Let's add 20 more drops. We've got 30 drops in here now, and it's breaking right away. I see like some purple with a little bit of a green or like a teal halo. It's still not very um, concentrated. I wasn't sure um, how dark it would feel, but let's go ahead and go for a total of 50 drops out of my dropper. So I'm gonna add another 20. Um, maybe this container that I picked was not the best because I'm definitely leaking under the cap. I don't think I have that cap on all the way. I'm surprised it didn't leak as I was mixing it. All right, so we've got 50 drops of our 50 nifty mixture. And yeah, I'm definitely seeing something that could look not sure if it's gonna read brown. It might read brown. It might read a little more purple, but I think that this is the mixture that we will use to attempt to break this for the first time. And then we can always decide whether we want to add more, um, more of this color for the second skein of yarn. I am pre-soaking two different skeins of yarn in just plain tap water. I've got 100 grams of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted, which is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And then I have 100 grams of Stroll Fingering, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. These are two of the yarns that I use the most here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. And I wanted to try breaking our Nifty 50 mixture on both of these. We'll start with the wool of the Andes because it, uh, if you want to maximize color breaking through dip dyeing, uh, it's easier to do on a superwash yarn because in general, colors, especially the blues, absorb slower and need more acid. But I'm gonna let this pre-soak for at least 20 minutes. We're about ready to go with my favorite dip dyeing setup. I have eight cups of water and I'm going to add one tablespoon of white vinegar to start with. And then as needed, we can always add more vinegar towards the end. But once this gets heated up, we'll be about ready to get started. I am now going to add the dye and then we're immediately going to start dip dyeing. Um, so here is our color. I do see some brown sediment on the bottom of the cup, but I do know better than to reach in. Let's see, we've got some of that rose color coming. I don't know how saturated um, of a color we are gonna get, but I sort of dip a little slowly until we start to see, ooh, are we gonna get a green? Hmm, I'm trying to think of what color this reminds me of. We are getting a green. Um, that is pretty. All right, I am gonna go ahead and add 
this end because I'm sort of liking this pink to green sort of colorway that we're getting. I just set a timer for 10 minutes before I might add more vinegar. Um, and yes, this final color is very green there. If you were curious why I did not you know, maybe go even slower to see if the green could break into blue and yellow. It's that like greens in general can be very difficult to break. If you want a green to break, you really want there to be a lot more blue than yellow because the yellows will absorb and you'll have enough blue left to then see that color shift. And I think that in this circumstance, with how um, the colors are sort of medium toned already, that it would be really hard to um, sort of take that all the way to the blue. I am curious if our reds are gonna look more brown as these greens absorb or what, but this is a very vintage feeling colorway. I'm gonna reduce the heat and let this go until the timer goes off and we'll check on it and maybe add more vinegar. Here's that bit of residue in the cup, which looks pretty brown actually. On paper, at least, maybe you could bring it all the way. There is a little bit of blue halo at the end. I just think it would be a little hard on the yarn. Okay, it has been 10 minutes, and I think that's all that's left is we've got some blues, and then we've got that titanium dioxide, which is why it's looking a little bit cloudy. But let's go ahead and add some more vinegar to our pot. Um, I'm going to add, I think, two more tablespoons of vinegar. One, well, oh, yeah, it's a heaping one. Two, this should help everything that's left absorb um, and help set the color. And I'm not expecting that it'll take that long for those blues to come in, but we really do. This doesn't feel brown. Maybe it's some of the green at the end does, but this feels like very much like a rose trellis kind of color. So I'm, I'm digging it. Uh, but I'm gonna let this go another, say, 10 minutes. Let's take a look, and that is clear, my friends. So I'm now gonna take my handy tongs, and ooh, this really does have a nice vintage feel to it. This could feel like a bit of a faded Christmas stocking, <laughs> or like a rose uh, climbing on a trellis. The green is a little mute for that, but I think that this is really, really pretty. And I am excited to give this a go with our sock yarn. I added half a cup of water to the residual color in the cup. And I think I went to up the intensity on the sock yarn. So I'm gonna go ahead and add 100 drops of our Nifty 50 mixture into the cup. And even with me attempting to fix the lid, you can see that we almost dripped over. I'm gonna go and try to save as much as I can and get that back in the bottle. Okay, let's stir this up. I know all that food coloring just sort of sunk to the bottom. And I'm gonna go ahead and swatch it on the same paper towel. This time when I first added it, you could see more of that brown versus feeling more pink like in the paler one. So I'm curious if we're gonna have like a brown to green transition with the more concentrated color or if we'll still see the pink. For round two, I am resetting the pot with eight cups of water and one tablespoon of white vinegar. And soon we'll give this a shot using double the dye. All right, let's go for this on the Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. I am stirring up our 100 drops of our 50 Nifty Shades. And now, uh oh, I get a good handle on our Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. Let's start dipping. And even though colors will absorb faster on superwash yarns like this, I am going a little bit slower. I don't know if I'm going to be able to capture any 
um, of the blues towards the end or not. Um, actually, the bottom is looking pretty blue right now. Yeah, I'm not sure if the yellows are binding really. Um, that final water is looking fairly blue. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go in. Yeah, this is looking actually like a bluer end than the last one that looked more green. Okay, here we are. I'm reducing the heat and I'm setting a timer for 10 minutes to come back and check in on it. But last time the finished color was more of a green and this time it's more blue. Uh, the color does feel browner versus pink here as well. And I wonder if part of this is because I dipped slower that we got this bluer shade because maybe some of those yellows absorbed faster. But it is hard to know. <laughs> Either way, I'm gonna let this sit for 10 minutes and we'll come back and check on it. After 10 minutes, let's check. And actually, I think basically all of the color has absorbed already. But for good measure, I'm gonna go ahead and add about two tablespoons of vinegar and I'm actually going to turn off the heat though but I'm going to leave this in an additional say five minutes just to treat it similarly to the first one. Not the same but similar. It's been five minutes and let's remove this yarn from the pot. These two yarns definitely don't feel like the same color. I you know, I, I will remix colors sometimes and I do similar dips on different types of yarn and frequently the resulting colors end up being similar. So there are a few things that are going on that could contribute to them looking so different. There is double the amount of food coloring in this one um, and I sort of went in slower trying to hit the blues. So I think it's possible that I do have some of these greens. They're just sort of in, um, maybe like in here. And so I sort of blew past them a bit because I let, um, of the way I was holding it. And maybe if I had the end going faster, it would have looked more like that green overall. So yeah, it could have been, I went all the way to the blue and potentially I could have done the same thing on this yarn if I went a little slower at the end. Another option is that the tube is not very well mixed. Uh, it's possible that there could be a pocket um, within that mixture of, you know, more blue or something, but they do have a similar like, flavor feel to them. The, the cup when I mix it did look really similarly. So I think just my rate of dip sort of adjusted the break. This is still hot. I'm trying to see if I see that green. Maybe, maybe I see some hints in here that feel like the end of that. But nevertheless, these are really, really pretty. And I am really excited to um, try to play around with this nifty 50 mixture a bit more. Once the yarn cools completely, we will go and wash it. Let's take another look at the dried swatches from the forks. This is the one I used on the stroll. This was the one from the Wool of the Andes. And I think that on the stroll, I really did just bypass that green. And I got to that little bit of blue that we see more in this halo. And they do look very much like the same color. So I think that the differences were from the rate that I dipped the yarn. So if I had dipped it in a little faster, we probably would have seen green at the end. And that is cool. I am going to wash these skeins together. So one immediate observation that I'm having here is that uh, the Americolor food coloring is a lot less potent than say Wilton Color Right. Um, in the stroll yarn, I added a hundred drops of our mixture. And even if those are smaller than some of the ones from the Color Right, even like if it was equivalent to 50 color white drops, it's still, you know, with about 30 drops, I was getting some really intense saturated colors. 
Um, but I think that these are lovely. I mean, this is this is a saturated. I can't tell if it's a burgundy or a brown. It's certainly like a warm, warm color. And yeah, I cannot wait to see how these dry. And I think that we ended up with gorgeous, gorgeous colors from mixing 50 things together. And oh yeah, so the water is clear and I'm not seeing a ton of titanium dioxide come out, to be honest. There was some in the, in the pot, so it's possible some of that settled in the container. Adding a little dish soap out of habit, but I also like to add the dish soap because it can show, sometimes you might see a tiny bit of bleeding when you add the soap, and it's just one way that I like to show that the color is in the yarn. Um, but I am now going to rinse out all the soap, hang the yarn up to dry, and then come back and share some final conclusions. And you realize that the fact that I now have this nifty 50 kit of food coloring means that I'm going to have a special announcement coming up. Stay tuned. Here is the finished dry yarn. Initially, they really did look like almost different colorways. But now that they are dry, you can really see the elements that are the same, like these sort of reddish green tones you can find like in here. The main difference is that on our stroll yarn, we finished with sort of a palish, almost mint blue. Uh, and we had this reddish green color on the wool of the Andes. And I think that the reasoning for that is that I dipped slower on the second version. And because of the slower dip, uh, I was able to transition from the green to the blue, whereas I didn't really hit that with the wool. I'm surprised a little bit because it's frequently easier to break colors more on wool since you get a greater difference in the rate of color absorption. But uh, this is something that definitely could be played around with more in the future. This is only the second time I have used AmeriColor food coloring on its own to dye yarn. I used it in mixtures at some point, but uh, I haven't really played with it a lot, so I didn't have a good feel for it. And I was honestly surprised by how inconsistent the drops were. Um, how in some of the more pigmented colors like the reds, the drops were so thick and large compared to the size of the drops of some of the other colors. Therefore, it's not a huge surprise that this midpoint skews so pink. Um, there's just a lot of red in there from all of the reds and pinks and everything that we mixed. Just balance-wise, I think if I was gonna make a graph of where these colors fell, uh, there's way, way more colors that have a red component than don't in this Nifty 50 set. While our midpoint is very pink, and I don't really feel a lot of brown in it, surprisingly, um, I think that if it was a lot more saturated, it might actually start to look more brown. This, these colorways do feel very reminiscent of, say, a dilute broken black. Um, some brands tend to skew a little brown and green, um, it really depends on the formulation, which again, just isn't a huge surprise <laughs> based on the mixture. What did surprise me is the saturation of colors. From my mixture, I used 50 drops of the mixture on the Wool of the Andes and 100 drops of the mixture on the Stroll. Now my drops um, may have been on the smaller side from the bottle I was using, but they weren't that much smaller than some of the drops I was getting out of the AmeriColor bottles. Some of those colors are, you know, not super pigmented, and so, you know, and of course there's the white, which basically contributed nothing <laughs> to the mixture. But it is really interesting to think about uh, how different brands might compare to each other. And in the past when I mixed uh, the AmeriColor colors with the Wilton uh, Colorite system, 
I think the Colorite system is way, way more pigmented because in, when I would use those, I would get a really deep, intense color from only around 30 drops of food coloring. And I have a feeling I might want more than that uh, with a single color to get something that is very intense. That's not to say I don't love these colors, but it's something to keep in mind. If you see me do a color mixture or a recipe and you try to do something similar with a different brand, it might come out way more intense or way less intense depending on, I guess, the actual color saturation involved. What do you think about these colors? And how do you think that they compare with some of the ones that I have chosen to design? Or maybe some of the other ones that fate has helped us design? Let me know in the comments. I really love hearing your opinions. Also, should I consider mixing all of anything else together? Hmm. I think the best part about having this kit, this Nifty 50 kit from AmeriColor, is the potential with all of these pre-mixed colors. Um, this really is like a box of crayons and there's just so much potential for dyeing yarn and playing with all of these different colors. In particular, I'm really excited to play with the navy blue. Um, it has blue number one and blue number two and red 40. And you don't often find a lot of stuff with blue number two. So I'm really curious to see how that might break uh, and play with it more. What colors would you most like to see me play with? Uh, do you want me to mix them or explore some of them on their own? And of course, as I ask that question, you probably know what I am planning to do with this kit next, right? I feel like with this mixture of 50 colors, suddenly we have the potential to create way more colors and have things that are a bit more surprising when we draw them at random and then mix them together. When is the next mystery mixture live stream going to take place? Are there going to be pre-orders available for slots where you can pick the yarn base and then I will randomly mix colors together or let the dice decide the colors that I mix together and create some beautiful dip dyed yarn? Well, as this video is premiering, I am in the chat, chatting along with you, talking about this experience, and I am now going to tell you when that live stream is going to happen. I will also be leaving it as a pinned comment and updating the video description now to contain all of that relevant information. Full disclosure, and this is a Chemnitz mom moment, <laughs> I had planned to announce the date and time in the video itself, but uh, life happens with two young children and sick days, and so therefore I did not know if I would need to change my plans and reschedule the event. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. If you are a huge, huge Chemnitz fan and you want advance notice when I am going to do these live stream pre-sales, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. One of the perks for patrons is that I give approximately 24 hours notice before a shop restock, which means that sometimes you get the first look at a pre-order before I have even announced it. Another thing you can do is subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and tap that bell icon to turn on notifications for every time I post. I also announce uh, pre-orders on Facebook and Instagram. All those links are in the video description. I am unbelievably excited to play with this combination more. And yes, yeah, stay tuned. It's coming soon. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching. I really hope that this premiere feature um, where I got to chat with you all while watching this video was as much fun as I hoped it would be when I started planning for this video.